The following program is paid by Praise Assembly Church Ministries. Welcome to Praise Assembly Church Ministries, a community church focused on family, individual growth, and most importantly, the Word of God. We are here to share the love of Jesus Christ, encourage kingdom living, and equip you with the tools you will need to live the abundant life God has promised. Today you will hear an uplifting word from God shared by our pastor, Dr. Johnny L. York. It is our prayer that you will receive a personal message from the Lord today. Thank you for tuning in. Now let's join our service. The Exchange, Part A. Long before anyone comes to accept Jesus Christ, any of us, before we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we all have three common and yet powerful problems that we have to deal with in life. Some of us don't know how to negotiate these problems, but let me just identify the problems and then maybe we can talk about how we can negotiate these problems through this message. The first of these problems that, that are common and powerful to all of us, the first one is our sin nature. Now you may not realize it, you may, you may say that I'm, I'm just, I'm a good guy, I'm morally sound, I'm, I'm, I don't cause any problems, I don't cuss, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do any of these kinds of things, I don't do drugs, I don't do any of that stuff. But if you haven't accepted Jesus, you still have a sin problem. So it's our sin nature is our first most powerful problem. The next most powerful problem that we have to deal with in life is the law. Now, you may not understand what the law is. You may not even be saved. You may not even read the Bible. But the, but the effects of the law still are in effect in your life, in mine. And we'll talk about that in a second. And the third powerful problem that we all have in life before we accept Jesus is dealing with the devil. He will not leave you alone. And even when you get saved, he's still going to mess with you but there's a way you can win through salvation. Our sin nature makes us desire sin over God. And when we desire sin over God, it causes us, our sin nature causes us to choose to obey sin rather than to obey God. What the law does is the law brings condemnation to us. You see, you can know you've done wrong or you've sinned in life and not be saved. That's the effect of the law. The law is already written in us when we're born. We're born by the, by, the, by the tenets of the law. So the law convicts us and it causes us to be condemned when we do things in life. I remember before I got saved and I did things that were wrong. If I would always go back sometimes and think about it and I would say stuff like, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I hate I did that. What caused me to, to be condemned about this? I feel bad about this. It's the law. This law did this. And the third powerful problem is, is Satan, the devil, who is our tempter and accuser. He tempts us into committing sin. And then once we commit the sin, he goes before God and accuses God of the sin we've committed. So it's like a catch-22. We find ourselves walking in life by our sin nature and the law and what the devil is trying to do in our hearts. And many times when people find themselves at that point in life, they're just lost. They, they, they want to do better, but they don't have the power to do better. And they say, if I knew, if I had the power to do better, I would do better. But they don't have the power within themselves to change how they're living. So, so, so but, but mankind, fortunately for mankind, there is a power that is far greater than the power of our sin nature. It is far greater than the power of the law. It is far greater than the power of the devil. And the power I'm talking about is the power of the cross. The power of the cross. Now, now the cross is perhaps the most recognized symbol on the planet. Everybody knows about a cross. You will find crosses on T-shirts. You find crosses as parts of jewelry. You'll also find crosses as tattoos on certain people. But because you wear a cross without the revelation of the cross doesn't give you an advantage at all. 
We have to have the revelation as to what the cross of Jesus Christ means to us and why it's so important. Paul writes in Galatians chapter 6, our foundation verses. Let's look at these in verse, verse 14, Galatians 6, 14. But God forbid, there is no way in the world God would allow me to glory in anything other than the cross. In other words, when I get the revelation of the cross, I don't think of myself as being all of that. The only reason I am who I am and the only reason I'm doing what I'm doing and the only reason I'm alive today is because of the cross of Jesus Christ. I had nothing to do with it. It's the cross of Jesus Christ. So when I realize that the only reason I am who I am or do what I do or you do what you do or you who you are is only because of the cross of Jesus, then I can start glorying in the cross. The cross has set me free from trying to please people. The cross has set me free from, from trying to fit in with people. The cross has set me free to, not to worry about what people say about me. The cross has set me free from me. So I glory in what the cross has done in my life. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. So all that I am is due to the cross. So Paul says, God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I to the world. So, so I pay no attention. I'm not led by the world anymore. And, and, and see, you, you have to come to a point in life. Once you find the power of the cross, what people think about you, it, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. What they say about you, you know what I tell them? Pick a number. I'll get, I, it, you, you'll, you'll come up sometime. Because of the cross of Jesus Christ, I am that I am by the grace of God. Hallelujah. So Paul says, for in Christ, there's neither, neither circumcision gives you an advantage or non-circumcision gives, gives you an advantage. Because in Christ, we are one man. Those things don't matter at all when we're in Christ Jesus. I, I'm, I'm, this is something that's very important that we have to realize in life today about the importance of the cross, particularly in the time in which we live. I was reading something not several weeks back, and, and I was wondering when I could use this and share this with the congregation in one of the sermons. But this was a quote by a, a pastor in, in uh, the Fort Worth, Dallas, Texas area. His name is Matt Chandler. This is what he quoted and said. Today, in today's world, people are more prone to align themselves and identify with a church rather than to align themselves and to identify with Jesus Christ. My God, my God. And they think they're Christians. They have no idea about the cross of Jesus Christ or the revelation of the cross. Would rather align themselves with a particular church ideology rather than to follow and fall in love with Jesus Christ. The, the cross symbolizes messages that the world cannot understand. Now, when I say the world, please understand, I'm not always talking about unsaved people, but there are people in the church who are, who, who are motivated and think like the world and desire things like the world and want to pepper it with Jesus Christ. It, doesn't, it can't work that way. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, We'll read here in verses 9 through 14. This letter to, to, the, to the church at Corinth. Paul says this. Now, he's speaking about God's wisdom. And so it's, it's many people don't, know, don't understand how that God has so much wisdom. Far beyond anything we have. His wisdom is so great. The Bible says this. He tricked the princesses of the world because when they crucified Jesus, they thought they had won. But that was just part of the wisdom of God. 
to prove to the world that he's God. Because what the princesses of the world didn't figure in their human wisdom or their, 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 their spiritual wisdom was the fact that he got up. He got up. Death could not keep him. And, and so he says in verse number nine, as it is written, when it says, as it is written, you got to go back and he says, go back and read all the scriptures about what I'm about to say. The scripture will confirm what I'm saying. As it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear hath heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Now, now, now watch this next part. For God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. Listen, you can go to church and not know the spirit of God. You can function in a church and not know the spirit of God. But there are things from God's wisdom that our eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard, neither entered into our hearts, that God will reveal to us by his spirit. That's what the Bible says. For the spirit, watch this now, the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Many people say, well, I know God. I know, I know God. No, you don't. God is so deep and God is so wide and God is so broad. God, God is God is God in a category all by himself. But God will reveal certain of his secrets to us only by his spirit. There have been times when each of us have dealt with problems or situations that we did not have an answer for. And we ponder this thing for days and hours or weeks. And then all of a sudden, we just say, I give up. And you know what God does? Hallelujah. I've been waiting for you to give up. Because almost within, with, within hours, God reveals the solution. He gives us the next step. Only being revealed by his spirit, God will do these things. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of a man, which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Nobody, no, no one knows God. Now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That's what I want to spend time personally doing for me. Okay, God, I know you gave me Jesus. He paid the price. But according to this verse, you got some more free things. You, you got some more free things that you want to give to me. And I, and I say this sometimes, God, you hear me? I want some of them free things, that free stuff. God says he has some things he will give to us freely. Which things also we speak not of the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. The Holy Ghost begins to teach us things that are beyond human intellect. The human mind cannot, cannot comprehend the things that God's spirit wants to teach us. The Bible goes on and says, verse 14, this is why wearing a cross does not give you revelation of, of, of Jesus. But the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God. The unsaved man, the natural man, the one who just goes to church and doesn't have a relationship with God. All this, stuff, look at what the Bible says, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. We have no connection with God. We go through the motions. And, and, and I'm saying this because I used to be where some of you may are, where some of you are right now. I used to look like a Christian. The best I could, I thought Christians looked like this. Even had that expression on my face. And 
then, as a professional man, didn't clap. I didn't lift my hand. I'm not knocking it, but I, I, listen, I can talk about it because I am. I didn't. But God told me 31 years ago when he called me to start this ministry, he says, I'm going to bring in professional people who will love me passionately, who will lift their hands before me unashamedly. You be the example of what I'm calling them. And over the years, all I've seen, and many folks have come in, in the crowds of people, God has brought in professional people. And you know what they do? Lift their hands before the Lord. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know that God is real. I know that he's faithful. I know that he'll do these things. All because of Calvary. So the cross symbolizes total submission to another person's will. The cross symbolizes a willingness to die to self. The cross symbolizes self-sacrifice. The cross symbolizes that Satan is defeated. And the cross symbolizes the place where the greatest exchange in the history of man took place. We sing this song many times and written by a gentleman many, many, many years ago, Robert Lowry. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? See, see, we, we, we sing that, but some of us don't, don't get the revelation behind it. It's a good song, but I want us to get the revelation behind it. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Oh, y'all all seen it already. Oh, precious fount I know. That cleanses me, makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The exchange took place at Calvary by the blood of Jesus Christ. He took our place on the cross of Calvary. Now you stop and think for a second. You and I, every one of us, deserves to be on a cross. The blood of Jesus allowed this exchange to occur. Romans 6.23 says this, for the wages of sin is death. No, wait, 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 wait. I was born in sin, according to the Bible, shaped in iniquity, according to the Bible, and according to the Bible, because I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity, I deserve to die. None of us are that good. But God loved man so much that he sent himself from the Godhead, his son Jesus Christ, into the earth in the form of sinful flesh. He did not sin, had not committed sin, but sent him as a substitute for sin, for you and for me. And through Jesus coming into the earth, he exchanged his life for my death. Oh my God. He exchanged his life for my death. Now, you see, I love people. I love being around people. But you ask me, I don't know. And you don't know. But Jesus willingly 
surrendered his will, submitted his will to someone else's will, became a self-sacrifice, was willing to die for people that we that did not even love him. And he said, I will exchange my life for their life. That's love. Lord have mercy, Jesus. So God says, I will send Jesus, and this is what he's going to do for you and I. He exchanged his righteousness for our sin. Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 26. I want you to look at this and watch this, because Jesus is trying to get the disciples to understand what he's going to, he's going to be doing. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Watch what he said. If any man will come after me, in other words, Jesus is saying, you got to let me lead. Let me say it again. You got to let me lead. When you let me lead, then you deny yourself, meaning, deny yourself, meaning you are not in control. Then you pick up your cross. In other words, when you pick up your cross, you're, you're willing to let everybody around you know that I'm different than I used to be. I, I'm, I'm no longer the person I used to be. I, I, the evidence of that is I'm, I'm, I'm lifting up my cross before you so you can see that I'm, I'm identifying with Jesus. And then he says, then you follow me. Let me lead. You're not in control. Let folk know you're different. And then you can follow me. Lord have mercy. For whosoever will save his life, shall lose it. If we're, if we're busy trying to be the best that we can be without Jesus, we'll end up not being successful. That's why a lot of people don't succeed in life because they want to, they want to be self-made people and not allow Jesus to mold us and make us the way he desires us to be made. So if you, want, if, if you try to save your life, you shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Notice that he's talking about exchange here. For what is it a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul. How does it benefit us? You look around at all the what's happening in the world and society and athletics and so forth. Tons and tons and tons. I have no problem with people making money. But Jesus is Lord, not dollars, not C notes. Jesus is Lord. Because at the end of the day, when your time is up, your C notes going to stay here. And folk in your family ain't going to treat your C note like you did. They already got another vision. They're just, they're just waiting to get their hands on your C-note. I'm telling you the truth. And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The word exchange means it's to give up something for something else. To give up something for someone else. Exchange. To give up something for someone else. Something that is given or received in exchange or in substitution for someone else. 2 Corinthians 5, 19 through 21, Paul writes to the church at Corinth and he says this, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. God was in Christ Jesus convincing and causing the world to be friends with him again. And the way he did this in Christ is that he did not impute their sins. In other words, God forgave them, the world, us of our sins. And hath committed unto us those who have received been, been benefits of this, the word of reconciliation. 
Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Here is some, that, that word, that, that we look at this and we begin to think about this. The word ambassador is a government word, political word, a government word. The word ambassador means that you represent a government. You are a government representative with delegated authority and you have an assignment or a mission to fulfill. So that's telling us that the kingdom of God is a government. It is a government with order. It's a government with organization. It's a government with power and authority. And you cannot have a government without having some territory. So the kingdom of God is a government with territory. And if you have territory, you got to have subjects and you got to have people that you've delegated authority to. So the Bible says we are ambassadors for Christ. We represent Jesus Christ and the government of God in the earth realm with our assignment being to reconcile, to persuade men and women to stop all this foolishness that's going on in life and come to the terms of obeying Jesus Christ and follow peace after God. People in the church act like the world. And people are, are hiding, smoke screening behind Christianity now. Do you really understand Calvary? Hebrews chapter 10 gives us some information here as we, about this great exchange. In this 10th chapter, we'll read verse 14, but let me give you a little backstory here. It's talking about the priesthood, comparing the priesthood of Jesus Christ and the Levitical priesthood. The Levitical priest, which Aaron was the high priest at one point, ministered, the Bible says they ministered daily in the tabernacle. And while they were ministering daily in the tabernacle, they were using many different sacrifices. And while they were ministering daily, using a lot of different Thank you for watching Praise Assembly Church Ministries with Dr. Johnny L. York. If you were blessed by today's message and would like a CD or DVD, email us at info at pacmchurch.org. Praise Assembly is a ministry where everyone is welcomed. Come join us for our Sunday worship services at 3254 Kernsville Road, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. For more information, visit our website at pacmchurch.org. See you next week at the same place and time. And remember, it's all about Jesus. Praise Assembly Church Ministries is a place where everyone's welcome. A place where everyone fits in and prayer is the foundation of everything we do. A life-changing church where you can become who God created you to be. Where Jesus is the minister of the sanctuary and people will love you just the way you are. At Praise Assembly, the doors are open and we are ready to receive you. Join us Sundays at 6 a.m. right here on the Triad CW. The preceding program is paid for by Praise Assembly Church Ministries.